Okay, so we're almost done with setting up this class diagram. There's one last thing we need to do, which is to have this dependency relationships between these two classes, concrete classes. And so you can do that pretty easily. If you get the dependency, there it is. Click on that and have one going from concrete aggregate to concrete iterator and then another going from concrete iterator all the way to concrete aggregate. So yeah, it's a little bit different. Things are a little bit um, different from the way things are done here as opposed to um, the diagram that you saw in the notes. There is no way to, as far as I know, there's no way to have uh, dependency relationship going back and forth. You might be able to overlap those arrows, but that's about it. These are actually two different arrows. Okay, so what do we need to do next? Now we want to make this a design pattern. So before we do that, there's a couple of things that Visual Paradigm does that allows you to do that you don't see in, um, in other packages. So one of the things we want to do is make sure that we want to set it up so that we only have, although we might only have one aggregate interface, we might have many different concre concrete aggregate classes. For example, if you're talking um, a Java, the aggregate would be something like list. Concrete aggregate could be linked list or array list or vector or stack. I, th I believe any of those would, would work. Okay, so Visual Paradigm um, has one more thing that you can do. Let me just make this bigger so I can select the class. And then I want to use stereotypes, which is something that comes from um, responsibility-driven development. It's uh, an idea that's sort of different from UML, but it's in this. The Visual Paradigm uses it. And so what I want to do is make this pattern clonable. So, I choose PTN clonable, and I make this pattern clonable. That is, I set it up as a design pattern, and then when I apply this design pattern to a specific problem, I can make it clonable. That is, I can make multiple copies of this, um, multiple, I guess, versions, I should say, of this concrete aggregation aggregate class. So, this is all getting ready to... Just make this um, uh, uh, actual design pattern. Okay, and then similarly, there might be multiple ways to make the iterator, concrete iterator, also uh, clonable. You might be able to have m multiple ways of multiple iter actual iterator classes. So you do the same thing. Right click. Oops, can't see this. Okay, right click and Oh, stereotypes pattern clonable there and I believe that's all we need to do now at this point we're ready to make this a pattern how do you do that for singleton it was easy you just have one class but now we have a whole bunch of classes select all of them and right click anywhere and then say define design pattern and we can leave it as iterator in an iterator.pat and this is going to be visible in this entire workspace so if you move to a different workspace you might not be able to see this but um, you can see it in, in within this workspace now you could save it to some other directory and then make it visible in other workspaces as well I'm not going to bother I'm just going to leave it in this current workspace okay so we're done with that. Now it's a design pattern. Uh, next thing we want to do is close this. And, oops, you can't see this, I guess. So I'm going to go in here and say new project. This is going to be, save it. All right, you want to create a new project, and this is an example that I'm going to use that was set up by 
um, visual paradigm in one of their tutorials. You can find it online. And so I'm going to call it, the project name is going to be Diagram Editor. So they set it up to be a general design pattern so they don't use interfaces. So it's slightly different from what I have, but it's the, I'm just borrowing their ideas for an application. Okay, I think that's all we need. So you can create blank project and then right click I believe anywhere uh, cancel. I'm not sure why I got that. So I'm just gonna go here, see a new diagram. Okay. Normal diagram, class diagram. And then here I'm going to say domain um, model, then right click and say utilities. Oh, can see this, I don't think. I'm going to move this over so that you can see all of my screen. All right. Sorry, I lose track of what exactly you can see. Um, just let me know if you run into problems. Supply design pattern. I say that okay, you can't undo this. That's okay. All right, and then we choose iterator, and then the thing to do is not to click OK because if you do, then you have to start from scratch and all that. All right, so make this dialog box bigger, and so now it has all of these things, and now we want to give specific names to each one of these. So we click on aggregate, and we will call it. Um, shape list, let's say. Okay. And it should have a method called Oops. I don't want to click on OK. I don't know if it's safe. I think it is. Oh, no, it's not safe. All right, I have to start from scratch. Such a pain. All right, I can't do much. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna create a new diagram. This class diagram. Call it domain model. Okay. Oh, it exists. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it domain model. All right. So I'm going to get rid of this, which is what I did not want to do. And now, okay, so now I created a brand new domain model, I hope. I think I messed up a little bit. That's okay. What are utilities and apply design pattern? Say yes, I'm aware. 
choose iterator. Okay, so here's the thing. The problem is that they give you this OK button and you're not actually supposed to use it till you're all done. So you click on aggregate. Aha, now I figured out what I did wrong. Here we want to say shape list. Don't cl click on OK. Instead, you click on the next thing that you want to edit, which would be concrete aggregate. And let's say something like linked list of shapes. Okay, don't click, resist the urge to click on OK, because if you do, then you have to start from scratch like you saw me do. Okay. Um, here, iterator, that's, that should be okay, I believe. Um, and concrete iterator. Ooh. Let's call it, um, Shape list iterator. Okay. And everything else is okay. And so when you do that, um, so here's some of the things that you can do. You can create a clone of this and say one more. And we can call it fast iterator. Let's say just assume that we have some way of doing that. And we can also clone this. You can say clone and say that we have an array list of shapes. All right, now we're ready to go for real. And lo and behold, we have, oops, we have two concrete aggregates. I think I renamed the wrong thing, but that's okay. So we have two iterators. We have two concrete aggregates. We should call this Somehow my naming didn't work. I must have not hit something at the right time. I think I have to open specification, call it um, array list of shapes. Okay, there we go. So it's all set. We have a linked list of shapes. We have an array list of shapes. They both implement this shape list interface. The clients can use both of them. Um, you have an iterator with two implementations. One is shape list iterator and one is fast iterator. So you saw a lot of the problems that uh, we can run into. You hit on OK and then things are not set up properly. I believe you can uh, save yourself, but it's still easier to go through that one wizard, uh, that apply design pattern wizard, and then if you do it all right, then you get everything done in one step, and there you have this nice application of the iterator interface with multiple concrete iterators, multiple um, aggregate objects where you store, let's say, shapes in this case. Okay.